Theology. So welcome again to this class where today we are going to discuss more on osmosis. Remember the previous class we had discussed on the physiological processes that we have and we said that we have active transport, osmosis and diffusion. So let's begin with osmosis and define what is osmosis. So this is the movement of water molecules from a region of low concentration to a region of high concentration through a semi-permeable membrane. So that is osmosis. Let's look at the forces that influence osmosis or the forces in osmosis. So the first force, we have osmotic potential. So what is osmotic potential? So you will say this, that osmotic potential is the ability of the solution to develop osmotic pressure when separated by a semi-permeable membrane. So that is osmotic potential. But you should know that when a solution is not separated by a semi-permeable membrane, osmosis won't take place. However, the solution has the ability and the solution has the potential to develop osmotic pressure. So let's define what is osmotic pressure. So osmotic pressure, you'll say this. This is the pressure water is drawn from low to high concentration. So as well, you might say like this. is the pressure applied to stop water from going back uh, to the dilute solution. So that is osmotic pressure. So the higher the solute concentration, the higher the osmotic pressure. So if the solute concentration of A is more than of B, therefore the osmotic pressure will be high. So remember we defined different types of solutions and we say that we have hypotonic solution, hypertonic solution and isotonic solution. So based on these three types of solution, they will influence the osmotic pressure accordingly. So let's look at the water relation in plants and in animals. We are going to start with water relation in animals. So we see how does water influence the animal cell or the plant cell. So let's look at animals. So first of all, we'll consider a red blood cell. So when we take this red blood cell and place it in a hypotonic solution, so what will happen? So this red cell will absorb water and then it will burst. So the bursting of the red blood cell, we called it hemolysis. So that is the bursting of the red blood cell. If you have been asked, define hemolysis, you will say that hemolysis, this is the process where a red blood cell is placed when placed in hypotonic solution, swells up, gains water and bursts. So that is hemolysis. So what happens when you take this red blood cell and place it in a hypertonic solution? So what will happen is that the red blood cell will lose the water that it has to the surrounding environment, then it will shrink. So the shrinking of the red blood cell is called crenation. So by then we'll have defined what is hemolysis in red blood cell and what is crenation in red cell. Remember it said that hemolysis, this is the bursting of the red blood cell after absorbing a lot of water from the surrounding, while crenation, this is the shrinking of the red blood cell after losing water to the surrounding when placed in hypertonic solution. So let's look at plant cell. So what happens when we take a plant cell and place it in hypotonic solution? So this is what will happen. So the plant cell will absorb water upon being placed in hypotonic solution. It will absorb water and then it will swell. So the, the water that the plant cell will absorb will enter the vacuole. So the vacuole will, will enlarge, it will expand towards the cell wall. So the pressure by which it will exert on the cell wall, it's called tugor pressure. So tugor pressure, this is the enlarging of the vacuole, expanding, and then applying a lot of pressure on the, on the cell wall, covering the cell. Therefore, the cell wall again will, will impact its pressure towards the pressure which is created by the vacuole, which is called the wall pressure. So the wall pressure is always exactly opposite from the tugor pressure. So if the tugor pressure is 2, the wall pressure as well will be 2, so as to equalize the pressure and prevent the cell from bursting. So when the cell has enlarged, this process is called, uh, or this process will say that the cell has become turgid. So let's look at the cell. When we place the cell in a hypertonic solution, so what happens? So when you take this plant cell and place it in a hypertonic solution, so what really happens is that this plant cell will lose water to the surrounding, just like the animal cell. So the plant cell will lose the water to the surrounding. So the vacuole, remember, we say that in hypertonic it will expand. Now in hypertonic, the vacuole will shrink. So the vacuole will lose a lot of water 
then it will shrink. So the process by which the vacuole will lose water and sh shrink, it's called, uh, or this process will say that the plant cell has become, or the plant cell has gone into a flaccid state. So that process is called flaccidity of the cell. That is when we place the plant cell in a hypertonic solution. So there comes another term which is called plasmolysis. So what is plasmolysis? So plasmolysis, this is the process where the plant cell will lose a lot of water to the surrounding, shrink and become flaccid. So that is plasmolysis. The aspect where the plant cell will lose water, shrink and become flaccid. It is called plasmolysis. So what is the opposite of plasmolysis? So the opposite of plasmolysis is deplasmolysis because plasmolysis is losing water. Now again, when we add water to the plant cell, so the plant cell will gain water, then it will again go back to the turgid state. So it is called deplasmolysis. So finally, let's look at the factors affecting osmosis. So the first factor we have temperature. So the higher the temperature, the higher the rate of osmosis. So the lower the temperature, the lower the rate of osmosis. So the next one, let's look at the thickness of the membrane. So the thicker the membrane, the slow the osmosis process will take place. So the thinner the membrane, the faster the process of osmosis will take place. Then lastly, let's look at the concentration of the solution. So if part A, if the solution A is more concentrated than solution B, therefore osmosis will be very fast or osmosis will take place very fast. But if the concentration of the solution is almost similar, osmosis process will be very slow. So let's look at the roles of osmosis in plants and animals. So the roles of osmosis in animals, let's begin with that. So first of all, we'll say that we have absorption of water from the colon into the bloodstream. Then the next one, we have osmoregulation, which happens in the kidney, nephron, then we have movement of water from the plasma into the tissues. Then lastly, you will say cell to cell water movement, whereby the water will move from this cell to that cell and that cell. So that is through osmosis. So finally, let's look at uh, the roles of osmosis in plants. So first of all, we are going to look at support due to turgidity. You remember we mentioned turgidity. So we have support due to turgidity. Then the next one we have opening and closing of stomata whereby we are going to look more into this in the earlier topics nutrition in plants then we have absorption of water from the soil this is through the root hairs then we have uh, cell to cell water movement then lastly we, ha lastly we have feeding insectivorous plants so that is all about osmosis a wrap up of the osmosis now in the next class we are going to discuss more on diffusion then we finish up with active transport so this has been today's class and thanks again for watching let's meet on the next class Biology.